If you read my second book, Hunting Big Mule Deer, The Stories, you'll remember the last chapter titled The Slump. This video picks up in that chapter. It's called Breaking the Slump. It's the last day. Travis killed a pretty good buck over here yesterday, so I'm gonna hunt this burn here for a few hours. I'm already on buck tracks. Right there. Just got a shot at a good buck. Come up over this little ridge right here, I'll show you. And I was moving slow enough, I caught his does up feeding. One of them got my wind, and because the wind was blowing right at him. She got all dicey and didn't know what to do and was walking around getting everybody up and he stood up and he's not a giant, but it is the last day, so. Don't know if I hit him though. I had to shoot through some thick brush. He was right there in the center of the screen. So I shot through that little lane and he gave me head on quartering, so it looked good, but it was pretty hard to get steady. Well, no harm done. I did not hit him. I was able to track all the deer out of that little area. They'd been feeding heavy in there, so it was hard to find their tracks. But once I got out of there and could see where they were bounding, I got on all of them, four or five different deer, and. No blood. I made about a 150 yard circle around the area, so just missed him. Um, he was facing at me. I, I, I had this shot right here. He was down below me, 135 yards, and I had to shoot off my knee and then kind of duck down a little bit to try to get under the branches. And I don't know if I hit one of those branches. I was literally shooting through about a 12 inch gap. So who knows, just how it is hunting in the trees. You don't always get them. The summer of that year had started off with a bang. On July 12th, I found this buck in an area that I'd be able to hunt with a muzzleloader come September. He was already 30 inches wide, and he still had 45 days to grow. I continued scouting other areas where I had another tag that would open in November for rifle, and I found this buck here. He was almost a twin to the first buck, although not quite as wide. It was only late July and he still had a month of growth as well. It was shaping up to be a great year. I kept up my scouting routine through August, checking some new areas and looking back over old areas. I never found any better bucks than those two, so I prepared for that muzzleloader hunt in September. On the opener I was in the unit and I stayed for 13 days. I never did turn that buck over. I'm sure he was there somewhere. There's a lot of cover there and a lot of places to hide. It is possible that someone else took him during the earlier archery season, but I doubt it. October 2-6, first sign of the rut right there. Little Buck's been chasing that doe around for about five minutes. You can see him sniffing her right there. He's been lip curling and everything. Got a cold snap this weekend. That's often all it takes to knock them into the rut when you get into late October. There was also a cow elk tag open in that same area where my rifle tag was. So I took my son and his friend and sure enough, they got one. My son had a muzzleloader tag that was also open right in the middle of the dates of my buck hunt. It was tough to get him out on it, but we made time. And on the very first morning we hunted, we found this big old buck bedded in the sage he was exhausted from rutting all night. You can see he's got his nose on the ground there. We had to get around some private property to get on him, so we made a plan, and that's where this hunt picks up. Okay, we spotted that good buck. We're hiking in here. Let's see if we can get a shot at him. death march we got above those deer and had that buck at 202 but I think a doe above just 
above us winded us. She took that whole herd down that canyon. So we didn't get a shot. But we know where he went, so we're gonna go over there and see if we can get him. What do you think, Cash? Yes. Yes, he says yes. He likes that buck. He's a pretty nice buck. If he was a four by four, he'd be scratching 190. We never did get another shot at that buck that day, and Cash had to get back to school. Within a day, I was back in my unit. The rut had really heated up. And while I was seeing lots of nice bucks, I still hadn't seen that big typical from July. I wanted to get Cash back on his hunt for one more day before it closed, so we made time for that right in the middle of my hunt. What are you laughing at, Cash? Like I told you, just hold still when we see a deer when we're in the truck, because if you hold still, they can't see you. They just think it's a self-driving car and there's no one in it. We found this really nice buck. And while he was only about 100 yards below us, Cash could just not make him out in the brush. We watched him bound away forever. I got right back on my hunt and spent the last five days hunting as hard as I could. And while I looked at some really nice bucks over the course of that hunt, I ended up eating the tag. Just how it is hunting big mule deer. Soon it was on to winter scouting and friends were texting me pictures of big bucks on the winter range even a few big towny bucks. Late spring rolled around and I made some time to take my son on a shed hunt. I'm not a real big shed hunter simply because I don't think it's critical for your success as a big mule deer hunter, but I do enjoy it when we can get out. Following is some audio from a podcast Jordan and I did in the summer of 2021 that was perfect for leading up to that season. When I started scouting, um, I started about the middle of July on the high country stuff that I was looking at. Maybe I'm, I think I scouted a little bit earlier than that on some of the lower stuff. And our deer numbers um, have have definitely rebounded, you know, because we we've had the the nineteen twenty winter weren't wasn't bad at all. The twenty twenty one winter was actually pretty good. Um, other than a little bit dry in the spring, but you know, we, we had a lot of fawns hit the ground those two years. And so deer numbers are looking pretty good. Lots of two points in the herd, um, decent numbers of bucks up to kind of about three years old. And then boy, it just drops off after that. And um, which makes sense if you lost, you know, your, your, your fawns in, that were born in 2016, those would be five-year-old deer right now. I put in you know, probably at least 20 days of scouting this summer. And, you know, we're talking hardcore backcountry horses, you know, going to secure spots where I expect to see deer. And by the time archery season opened, I had only found a couple of sh like two shooter bucks. And these are not even big bucks, but these are like, you know, kind of hitting that 180 or, you know, at least nice and why you know upper 20s but still not big big bucks but like hey you know there's just it's kind of slim pickings right now and one of them was on private and there was a little piece of state ground right next to where he was at and i i elected not to hunt him because i just thought i, I don't want to sit there and stare onto private for the first you know week of archery season which is typically the best of the of the season to be in the open high country Uh, the other other buck was living on kind of a heavy timbered mountain that I just know better than try to archery hunt there, but I did it anyways. And sure enough, I never saw it. It's just it's just too hard to bow hunt. There's not enough glassing opportunity. I still I still burned up three days on it. And then um, I decided to move to another area that I had scouted in August. And this country is the kind of country where you've got about a mile of ridgeline, 
two or three pockets in there that'll hold deer in it. And I'm up on the top looking down in there and I see a good buck feeding below me at about 150 yards. Um, and uh, I can tell he's, you know, 18, 19 inch backs, which are good. I'm looking at him from the side. I can tell he's got at least 12 inch back forks, which is really good. You know, we're talking, you know, you know book quality buck. Okay. About 30 minutes after I shot that video, I worked my way around the mountain. It looked like he was headed for a saddle. That never works out, but I thought I better get over there. So I got over there, got down there just right. Didn't have time to take my boots off, but I thought it's okay. I'm just going to sit here and set an ambush for him. I'll either see him or I won't. I didn't sit five minutes and here he come. And he was the lead buck. So I got my bow drawn, 30 yards. I had already ranged it. Nailed him, nailed him. Shot him in his right side. Excuse me. Ooh, I might have got better penetration than I thought. I shot him in the right side. When he turned to leave, the arrow was sticking out the left side. My brain just thought, oh, that didn't go in very far. Oh man, if I, oh man, I blew right through him. I blew right through him. Still gonna give him some time though. It looked like he was hit hard, but man, you just don't know. Praise God, seven days sneaking around and glassing and not finding anything worth even looking at. And oh man, great buck. Well, it's been about two hours since I shot him. So, thinking it through where I hit him, I'm pretty sure he's done. I think he was done right after I shot him, but if not, I've given him enough time. And I called my dad, he's tracked a ton of wounded game over the years, and ran everything by him, where I hit him, how the deer reacted, how much penetration, and he thinks he's down there too, so it's time, and I'm ready to go look at him. That's the rest of that limb that he busted off. It's got blood on it. Well, the bad news is I was wrong. He wasn't right there. The good news is it's three hours later and I'm still on his blood. He's gone about 250 yards. I'm just creeping through here, spot to spot or track to track. He's gotta be here. I've got a complete pass through. Dark blood, I didn't get any lungs. But he has not laid down. So, I'm praying. So this is what I'm up against. I'm so freaking colorblind. That looks brown to me. But I texted it to my dad and he said it's blood, so I'm going to keep following it. Well, almost eight hours of tracking and I can't find him. I got a complete pass through the middle of the body. I just don't know how far forward or back. It was real dark blood with no guts on the arrow, so don't know. Can't find him. So it's been an hour and a half since I found my last blood. Pack it up, try again tomorrow. Day two, it's about three o'clock in the afternoon. I got up here this morning, I brought the horses and I've been watching for birds. I retracked out to the end of the blood trail and I just can't find him. I looked at the country below. There's some cliffs and stuff below that. There's no birds down there. So no sign of him. What a heartbreaker. since I shot him. I looked for 
seven, eight hours yesterday. And I've been out since daylight this morning. I did check some country on the backside of here to see if there's any more bucks. But no sign of him. Not hearing any birds either. I'm about 300 yards above his last track with blood. I don't know. Maybe I hit him a lot higher than I thought. Never found him. No birds. No nothing. Dad's telling me that buck's alive, Rob. I don't care what you think. You you shot him too far back. You didn't hit him in the guts because you're not finding guts. You know, that, that buck's alive and well. And of course, I'm thinking, no, no. Last morning. There's a rifle season up there in October. I had told Travis about what happened with the buck. And um, so, you know, so he was aware of it. And so mm -hmm. uh, we pack in, um, get there uh, Saturday. Travis and I take the horses over there. We tie them up. It's just cracking light. You know, I'm still kind of getting my gear together. I hear Travis over there going, dude, good buck, good buck, good buck. I'm like, oh, awesome. awesome. So I squat down, look through the spotter. It's him. It's the buck I shot in archery season. Totally Dude. identifiable. I can recognize this buck in five seconds. A little fog bank rolled in, but Travis finally got three quick shots at him and never touched a hair. Um, we gave him an hour, went over there, got on his tracks. A couple of grown men basically crying in their beer on the mountain. Yeah, because we knew oh, this man. is it. We lost this buck 35 days to the day after I wounded him that Travis found him. Well, we're almost at the trail end. I hear side by side. I bet it's my dad. He always comes and meets me on my way out. He can't hunt anymore. This is how he tries to keep me encouraged. I'm a lucky man. After that hunt wrapped up, I was home for a couple weeks getting rested up. I got the boys out for a couple more days of deer hunting and Cash's friend Nathan got his first deer. From there it was on to Colorado a few days ahead of the season. I stopped in and saw my old friend Kurt Darner, did a little scouting in his unit, and then I was on to mine. Opening day here, Colorado, November 13th. Latest third season's ever opened in my life. Bucks rutting like crazy. I've only seen one good buck this morning, and uh, he was right in the doze, so exciting. Right off the bat, opening day. Well, I'm over here where he was. I just saw his doe skirting down the ridge. Something's chasing him. I saw a little two-point with him, but I didn't see him. Well, I stayed in here all day, and I never did come across him. I saw a lot of does, and I think they were the does he was with, but I don't know if he peeled one off and moved her somewhere else, or he just pulled away from these. But uh, it was a pretty good deer hunt. My buddy Scotty Thompson's gonna come up today and help me for the last three days. He'll be here tonight. Um, looking forward to that. These hunts by yourself, they can be hard. So when you got a buddy coming, it just gets you more fired up. So looking forward to hunting with him. He knows this place better than anybody. He's taking 190 bucks out of here. So hoping a little of that Scotty magic rubs off on me. But if not, it's gonna be good to, good to hunt with him, good to get to know him a little bit better. Looking forward to it. So, got the BTX set up this morning. Got tons of country to look at. Scott and I would split up every morning and head different directions. With the rut going strong and the migration too, we were finding multiple nice bucks. But we had record heat and a full moon, so they would move into the cover not long after sunrise. On the second to the last day, Scott found what was probably the best buck of the hunt. I wasn't far away and I moved in onto a knob right above him. We stayed the entire day, but we never could spot him again. The story was much the same the next morning. Scott found another shooter buck, but by the time I got within range, he had moved his does into the cover and then along the migration route. That's migration hunting for you, and while we had a great time, I did eat the tag.
Winter seems extra long when you're in a slump, but you have a lot of time to think about what you did wrong and what you'd do different, given the chance. I shot all my weapons as much as I could in the spring and got ready for scouting. Come July, I was looking from the low country to the high. Buck numbers seemed to be good and I was finding a few shooter bucks here and there. Then in early August, I found the best buck of the year. With great backs, probably 30 inches wide, he really was a dream buck. But believe it or not, I decided not to hunt him. There were at least two other guys that knew he was there, and I've kind of learned that combat hunting for big mule deer, especially during archery, never works out. So I continued to scout to look for other bucks. By the time archery season had opened, I decided to hunt an area that I'd hunted before and a few good bucks had shown up in in the summer that year. But right before the season opened, the heat really poured into the west. Mid 90s to 100 degrees was the forecast. I got camp set up and started hunting opening morning. And right off the bat, I located this nice buck. That first buck is real and was a pretty nice buck. He's number two on my list. But... He bedded down on a chunk of private and I can't get to him. He's got to move. Then this other buck, he's a nice buck too. But he bedded up right underneath me and gosh, he's been in that bed for two or three hours. It's so tempting, but I can't get one of these other bigger ones if I shoot him now. So I'm going to wait. Call me crazy. Then on the third morning, I found that wide buck again. He had moved off the private and up onto the public where I could hunt him. He was a dandy. Heavy non-typical, everything I'd been looking for. The problem was he was with about four other bucks and in brushy country like that with that many ears and noses, I wasn't gonna get close. So I just watched him. And then about 9 a.m like big bucks often do, he got all grumpy and started running those other bucks off. He moved over into the next coulee and bedded down by himself. A bow hunter's dream. It took a couple hours, but I was able to close the distance to 25 yards and I waited for him to stand. When he finally did, he didn't present a shot. He walked straight away from me and went out to 40 yards and turned slight quartering. I drew my bow and he picked up the movement. I rushed the shot and ended up nicking him across the brisket. I stuck around for the rest of the week watching for him and while all the other bucks were there, he never showed back up. I was definitely in a slump. I went home and licked my wounds for a couple of days and then moved back onto the rifle hunt in October. It was hot and dry and I was only finding small bucks. I was hunting in an area where I'd seen a big heavy buck two years in a row in the summer, but I hadn't been able to turn him over. I was only finding average bucks and I decided to wait until the snow came. And boy did it show up the end of October. It was just what I needed. I hunted the area for four days and I ended up turning over quite a few nice bucks, but I still didn't find what I was looking for. I only had one more hunt to go for 2022 and it was looking like the slump was gonna continue. Cold, second week in November, perfect hunting conditions. Uh, opening day, I've just been out here glassing from the truck, kind of relearning the unit even though I've been here before. Um, and the bucks are moving. It is, it is rut city right now. For this last hunt of the season, I'd be hunting with my good friend, Travis Hobbs. The second day of the season, he located a good buck chasing does down in some heavy timber. It took him about an hour to get a clear shot, but he put the buck down. When he finally made his way down there, he found he had taken a true 30-incher. Way deep. He's like a big puppy. Like a buck in tow. Travis could only stay one more day, and I got to admit, it was a lonely feeling that night thinking I'd be on my own the rest of the week. Mm -hmm. 
Not long after sunrise, I spotted a heavy-bodied buck down in some thick oaks. I couldn't get a real good look at him, so I wasn't sure if he was a shooter, so I continued to move up the draw to get a better angle. About the same time I could tell this buck was a 30-incher, I got a text from Travis. He had seen the buck too. All this text said was SHOOTER in all caps and exclamation points. I made a couple of shots and watched the buck go down. It took me a couple hours to get over there and actually find him in the heavy cover, but when I walked up on him, it was a feeling of pure joy and relief. The slump was finally over. I thank the good Lord for our fortune and especially the fact that Travis was along for the moment. He retrieved the horse and the mule and brought him up the mountain to help me. And while he made fun of me with my dull knife as I quartered up the buck, we took in the moment. For two of us to take 30 inch bucks on the same hunt, we knew we may never go this way again. By dark we had the buck quartered up and headed back for camp. And I thought about the slump. If you ever get in a slump, just keep doing what you know works. And don't be afraid to try something new. But no matter what, don't give up. It's just a slump. We tried to get a deer, but we can't. No, you ran away, didn't you? Yep, but a big deer just ran away, and we can't get a shot at him. That's okay, bud. We'll see you next time. Yeah. Well, so I'm on my way out. I've got a long walk. I'm just telling Robbie, I'm getting kind of hungry. But I told him I had my backpack logistics. Big buck killing kit. And it kicks ass. Like, this is awesome. But check this part out. How about that buck? Send me a dozen. <laughs>